Hello everyone, Dr. Sunil Dand, internal medicine physician. Welcome to another video. I often find it fascinating to go back and look at old sources of news and information before a big event happens that supposedly changes the world and the way that people think. And you look back and you look at what certain people, certain organizations were saying and you think, my goodness, that's what they were saying before this particular event happened. And this could apply to many different circumstances in life, the before and the after, when the world seemingly changes and you wonder just how it has changed so much and how millions of people are led down a certain path, certain narratives take hold when people thought completely different things beforehand. So let me share with you this article that was published at the beginning of 2017. Take a look at this. So here we have an article that was published in STAT in January 2017. Lavishly funded Moderna hits safety problems in bold bid to revolutionize medicine. Yes, that is what all these companies want to do. They want to revolutionize medicine. It's nothing about making money at all. It's all about helping people, isn't it? Let's take a read of the article and I've shared the link with you down below. Moderna Therapeutics, the most highly valued private company in biotech, has run into troubling safety problems with its most ambitious therapy, the publication has learned. And it is now banking on a mysterious new technology to keep afloat its brash promise of reinventing modern medicine. Exactly one year ago, Moderna CEO Stefan Bansell talked up his company's unbelievable future before a standing room only crowd at the annual JP Morgan Healthcare Conference here a standing room only crowd, not of patients, of medical professionals, people who may benefit and actually use the therapy. They do it in front of banks, private investors and the money people. That should tell you everything you need to know. He promised that Moderna's treatment for a rare and debilitating disease known as Kriegler-Nijar syndrome, that is a syndrome where the body cannot process bilirubin, it was developed alongside biotech giant Alexion Pharmaceuticals and it would enter human trials in 2016. It was to be the first therapy using audacious new technology that Bansell promised would yield dozens of drugs in the coming decade. Well, that's what every big pharma company wants, dozens of drugs in a short amount of time. But the Kriegler-Najjar treatment has been indefinitely delayed, an Alexion spokeswoman told STAT. It never proved safe enough to test in humans, according to several former Moderna employees and collaborators who work closely on the project. Unable to press forward with that technology, Moderna has had to focus instead on developing a handful of jabs, turning to a less lucrative field that might not justify the company's nearly $5 billion valuation. So the company, Moderna, really wanted to focus on jabs. It's all jabs right now, and jabs are a loss leader, said one former Moderna manager. Moderna right now is a multi-billion dollar jab company and I don't see how that holds up. Bansell made no mention of the Kreiglander jar drug when he spoke Monday before a similarly packed room at this year's JP Morgan conference. So his presentation focused on different jabs including two strains of influenza, the Zika virus and the fourth remains a secret, not sure what that means. They then go on to talk about the balance sheet for Moderna. And then listen to this part here, in need of a Hail Mary. There you go, Moderna needed a Hail Mary moment. Founded in 2012, Moderna reached unicorn status, a $1 billion valuation in just two years, faster than Uber, Dropbox and Lyft. So where does mRNA technology tie into all of this? The company's premise, using custom-built strands of messenger RNA known as mRNA, it aims to turn the body cells into ad hoc drug factories, compelling them to produce the proteins needed to treat a wide variety of diseases. There you go, Big Pharma's dream, turn the body cells into drug factories. This sacred body, given to us by God, given to us by nature, whatever you believe. Your cells turned into a drug factory. Again, it aims to turn the body cells into ad hoc drug factories, compelling them to produce the proteins needed to treat a wide variety of diseases. But mRNA is a tricky technology. Several major pharmaceutical companies have tried and abandoned the idea, struggling to get the mRNA into cells without triggering nasty side effects. 
So there you go then. Up until, what was this, only six years ago, companies were really struggling with this technology without producing nasty side effects. Bansal has repeatedly promised that Moderna's new therapies will change the world, but the company has refused to publish any data on its mRNA vehicles, sparking skepticism from some scientists and a chiding from the editors of Nature. Well, I guess old habits die hard. Where have we heard that before? Drug companies, big pharma companies not being fully transparent with their data results and allowing people to see what they were finding. The indefinite delay on the Kriegler-Najjar project signals persistent and troubling safety concerns for any mRNA treatment that needs to be delivered in multiple doses, covering almost everything that isn't a jab, former employees and collaborators said. The company did disclose a new technology on Monday that it says will more safely deliver mRNA. It's called VIGL. But in neither case has the company provided any details. So they say here again, the technology would have to be a miraculous Hail Mary sort of save for them to get to where they need to be on their timelines. Of course, that is the timeline for making money. And then they talk about various recriminations, work environment issues, including on-the-spot firings for failed experiments. And the article goes on. Again, I will share the link with you down below. In Moderna's eyes, the one in a million disease looked like an ideal candidate for mRNA therapy. This is Kriegler-Najjar syndrome, but it didn't quite work out for them. Every drug has what's called a therapeutic window, the scientific sweet spot, where a treatment is powerful enough to have an effect on a disease, but not so strong as to put patients at too much risk. For mRNA, that has proved elusive. In order to protect mRNA molecules from the body's natural defenses, drug developers must wrap them in a protective casing. And they talk here about nanoparticles made of lipids, which we've heard a lot about since. And here it's mentioned again, a former employee who described Bansal as needing a Hail Mary. This part here talks about the finances, a huge valuation, but a modest pipeline. It also calls into question Moderna's valuation pegged at $4.7 billion. And they touch upon the cash struggles at Moderna. Well, my heart bleeds for them. Violin playing there. The company has raised nearly $2 billion in cash from investors and partners, but it has done so by promising a revolutionary technology safe enough to deliver repeated doses of mRNA. I'm sure that five years from now, we'll look at 2017 as the inflection point that Moderna went for a liftoff. We have a chance to transform medicine and we won't quit until we are done and we have impacted patients. Well, that certainly happened a few years later. Well, we should be so happy for Moderna that they found their Hail Mary because they did indeed make a ton of money in the end from the same technology. Well, here we have an article published earlier this year in January. JP Morgan 2023, that same company, Moderna reaped $18.4 billion in jab sales last year, projects at least $5 billion in 2023. That's an awful lot of money that has been made. So whether we're talking about Moderna, Pfizer, which made even more money, again, they really had their Hail Mary moment. And it is fascinating to read what was being said about this technology only three years before to what is now being said. And the question is, has the technology changed? Has the science changed? Or has people's thresholds for accepting certain things changed? And has the narrative changed from the mainstream media, from the establishment, including the medical establishment? That is the question. And you can look back, not just with this pandemic situation, but other situations in life, but focusing here, obviously on what's happened over the last few years, Look at what was said before 2020 about other things like mitigation measures, face coverings, natural immunity. It's like everybody has done a complete 180. How does that really happen? Does the science change or is it simply people who are creating the narrative and pushing certain agendas who are changing what they are saying? And of course, if you have the mainstream media on your side, then that's really it. That is game, set, and match. Thanks everyone for listening. Let me know your thoughts down below. The Hail Mary moment for these big pharma companies. Hit the like button if you like this video and the bell button for more similar videos in the future. Also check out my online academy and my uncensored platform. Those links are down below. 
Remember, huge swathes of healthcare and medicine are completely and utterly corrupted. Do your best to stop the system from making you sick and do everything in your power to keep you and your family away from mainstream medicine and from doctors. That's the best thing you can do. Thanks again, and we will talk again very soon.